Welcome everyone. Um, we will be discussing tax lien investing, assessing the benefits and risks with Fuquan Bilal. So thank you for joining us. We're going to go over a brief of who Verivest is, and then I'll give the floor to Fuquan. Thank you. All right, so who is Verivest? We are a real estate investment platform designed to bring transparency and trust to middle market investing. Our mission is to create and enable the conditions to increase the speed of trust in the private middle market real estate investment space. Our goal is to help enable investors to direct capital to those sponsors and managers who can objectively demonstrate they are trustworthy stewards of the capital and those who cannot. All right, so here is our sponsor directory. If you have not checked it out yet, you can search by minimum investment type. You can search by an MSA that you are interested in. You can connect with a sponsor directly through our platform and you can also see all the sponsors background checks. To be on our platform, there are verif verification requirements. So you may have no personal or business bankruptcy petitions, no unfavorably resolved lawsuits, no regulatory sanctions in the past seven years, no felony criminal convictions, and sign the Verivest Code of Conduct, which Fuquan has checked all those boxes. So he is a Verivest Gold member. Um, and then I don't want to take too much of your time um, talking about Verivest, so I want to give the floor to Fuquan, and um, I know he has a great presentation ahead. So he is the fund manager at NNG Capital Fund. He is a strategic real estate investor, and he loves to add value. It gives him a feeling of importance, and he is a superhero to his children. Yes. So without further ado, I will give the floor to Fuquan. Thanks, Brittany. Really appreciate it. Yes, um, you're welcome. That was great. That was great. Yeah, I'm definitely superhero to my kids. It's usually the first thing I start off with. And I always say that helps me grow a lot. Being a father to my children, I learned so much. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing and very challenging. <laughs> so basically, we're going to talk about uh, tax lien investing. Um, this is something that I've learned a long time ago. And really started to put it into action, I would say now, uh, maybe three and a half years ago. So I've been doing real estate for about 21 years. And for some of you guys who've been doing real estate for that long, or even if it's 10 years, you learn things along the way, but we all stay laser focused on, on what's in front of us. And when it comes time to pivot and use another strategy, you implement that strategy. For me, I saw a shift in the market somewhere um, around 2015 where real estate prices started to increase. And by the time we got to 2017, um, you know, the market was increasing until we came to COVID and then the bubble burst. And now the market is really out of control. So this was a way for me to start getting off market property. So because I'm a node investor since 2011, I've been doing real estate since 99, transitioned to becoming a node investor and started to laser focus on that in 2011. I built a lot of contacts and relationships with banks where I was able to get REOs, a portfolio of REOs along with portfolio of notes, uh, but that came uh, competitive as well. So I started looking at the tax liens and, and one of my sources that was selling me properties was a fund who purchased tax liens. And they were not in New Jersey where I do most of my fix and flips and my rental stuff at. And I was just curious on, if they were able to sell me the property for X, I wonder what they were picking it up for. So I did some investigation. I went to the local town uh, shit where the tax things were coming from, started to speak to people in the tax department, asked them questions, and found out that they actually have a tax auction, which is, this is different from the regular tax sale that you guys are familiar with. And we'll get into both of them and what it, what's the difference. Um, but this was the tax auction on vacant properties. And I never know, and, and your local municipality have this as well. You just have to go in and do some due diligence. I never knew that uh, when the taxes are not paid on vacant and abandoned properties, it actually goes to, in this municipality, what's called a special tax sale. Um, and there's some parameters around that, and that's why they call it special. The regular tax uh, auction, you can go and buy delinquent taxes, you can assign it, you can you play that game and assign it and make a fee off of it. Someone else could then take over and proceed with the foreclosure. Um, every state has a different timeline. 
But I learned this special tax lien auction, which I'll talk a little bit about it in the, in the presentation, which was very intriguing to me because it reminded me of the note business. It was a long-term play. It wasn't, you know, you buy it, you fix it, you sell it, you get money right away. And I like long-term investments. Um, it, they, they seem to be more profitable the longer you wait, especially when it's capital gains involved. It's, it's, a, it's a really good, a good outlook. So what are tax liens? If you're new and this is your first time and you don't know what a tax lien is, it's basically property taxes that are delinquent that the homeowner don't pay. It basically, the, the township has a right to collect on that. So they put the taxes out for sale annually. Somewhere around fourth quarter, around the holiday time, Christmas time, they start putting out notice to sell for tax liens. Um, and that really tried to encourage homeowners to come and pay their taxes before their taxes go to a tax auction. What happens when a property goes to a tax sale auction is, and this is the way for the municipalities to regenerate money back on their books, because you remember the property taxes pays for things that the municipality fund. Um, you know, the police, the school, the roads, the garbage, all of that stuff. So if they're not collecting on the, the amount they're supposed to every quarter, it puts them in a the red. So they need to sell off these taxes and have an auction where an investor like yourself can actually go buy these liens, they become whole again, and you take over the lien. The benefit of that to you is you get to earn an interest, right? Where I'm at in New Jersey is 16 to 18% on average, which is a pretty healthy return. Uh, nowadays, it's it's very competitive. So people do what's called bidding down a lien, and we'll get into that. Um, but there's still room to make money. And there's two different plays. If this is the regular auction where delinquent taxes on occupied properties are auctioned at in the fourth quarter, uh, you can be successful in buying that lien. That's when it becomes passive. More than likely, if it's occupied and they only behind one quarter, it's a 90, 95% chance that they're actually going to redeem and you get to earn that interest, right? Um, the other one is, and in the city get the back taxes, you as the, the person who purchased the tax, you pay the city for the lien, and then the, the homeowner will pay you with interest when they redeem the lien, right? And that's in short how it works. That's the regular tax auction. Um, so you go to the auction and you make a bid. So here's what I was talking about. You can actually bid down. So if you have, uh, if the, this, in New Jersey, we are mad at 16 to 18% interest. Bidding down would mean you would just pay more. I'll give you an example. Um, taxes in New Jersey are extremely high, right? That's what, probably the most taxes anywhere. New Jersey is number one in everything, foreclosure taxes. But um, most of the, the average house here is maybe 350,000 now in today's market for decent property. Uh, taxes on the house could be average of 15,000 and 20,000 in some, in some areas. It could be 35,000, right? Like West Orange, New Jersey, taxes are extremely high. I don't know why the schools are not comparable to it, but you know that's that. Um, so usually, what happens is if the taxes, if someone falls behind taxes about fifteen thousand or more, it's very hard for them to come back, right? As you say, the average person in the U.S. has about forty five hundred dollars in a savings account, average family, so it's hard for somebody to scrape up fifteen twenty thousand and redeem their taxes. Um, sometimes they may refinance the house and pay it off, or get a loan from someone and pay it. But typically, if someone is fifteen, twenty thousand, or thirty thousand dollars behind in taxes, it's more than likely they're going to lose the property. Um, and big people usually bid on those liens. So, if the if they owe thirty thousand in taxes, and let's say the interest is sixteen percent, and um, somebody bids that thirty thousand, then they earn a sixteen percent. If somebody bids sixty thousand, then they will only earn eight percent because they've bidding it down, and so on and so forth. The more you pay. For the lien, the less interest that you're going to earn. Um, and anything over the lien is like a surplus. So, um, you know, you, you only earn interest on that 30000 not the whole amount that you pay. And when that lien is redeemed, you get back that 30000 plus that extra 30000 you paid, it sits in escrow in a township, and you get that money back as well. Um, so basically, that's what bidding down is. Um, premium bidding, when you pay a certain amount of dollar on top of the face value, we just talked about that. That's also, um, they, they hold that premium amount in escrow. And if the tax are redeemed, you get that back as well. But you only earn the interest on the 30,000. That's why your rate go down low, right? This is the regular tax lien auction. Um, you know, basically there's several opportunities to make income in tax and investing. Um, as I mentioned, it depends on what state you're in. Some states are high, some states are low. Um, you can foreclose on a property. Taxes become, taxes is before the mortgages, right? A lot of people don't know that. They think their first mortgage 
is, is um, has more seniority over taxes is the taxes than the mortgages, right? Even HOA liens and super lien states are before the mortgages, right? I don't want to go dump into a rabbit hole on that. We'll stay on taxes. But when I when I learned about this, I actually first went to the auction and observed how it was going. Then the people who won, of course, I had conversations with those guys, right? Because those are people to be private lenders or investors themselves. And I wanted to learn more about the business. Then on top of that, <clears throat> I wanted to find out who they were using to uh, process their tax lien foreclosures. Those were the attorneys. Uh, what I actually wound up doing was creating a relationship with somebody in town um, in the tax office. When I would go pay property taxes, I would ask questions. When is the next auction? And I asked them one day, who do you guys use? Oh, ask them actually, what happens if somebody don't bid on the taxes? What happens to those liens? They go, well, we foreclose on them. We take them over and we try to go after the property in the city. So I said, what attorney do you use for that? They gave me that information. The attorney was about $350 an hour, some $275, $350 an hour, I don't remember. I put them on retainer and it cost me about $2,500. But I had um, organic information straight from the attorney. And this actually was one of the attorneys that did um, the continuing education courses for attorneys that do tax liens. So very well known in New Jersey. Uh, there's two uh, well known attorneys, but he happened to be one of them. And I got in contact with him through luck and um, paid him a retainer. And I extracted so much information. What's my risk? How can I lose money? What is the process? And I'm going to show you guys the process that um, I was able to extract from him with this as well. Um, once you foreclose on a property, uh, it depends on what state you're in. Some states are tax lien, some states are tax deed. If it's a tax lien state, and you buy at the regular tax sale in New Jersey, you have to wait two years before you can actually execute your foreclosure. That's the regular tax sale. For the special tax sale, you can accelerate foreclosure. We have a, a vacant property act that was passed um, years ago. The property is vacant. That allows you to accelerate foreclosure. Most no holders know what I'm talking about. If you have notes in the state of New Jersey, um, and we can accelerate it and we can get our foreclosure done in six to eight months instead of waiting for two years. So tax lien versus tax deed. I know Florida, Florida is a tax deed state. Um, I think upstate New York um, is a tax deed state. There's certain states, you can Google tax deed states, tax, tax lien states, and it will tell you what it, what it is. So tax deeds are uh, when tax sale certificates are sold, not only vested interest in the property, but winning bidder also get ownership as well. So if you buy a tax deed, you actually own the property right then and there and there's no foreclosure process. So the township would just give you the deed and you own a property, you can start your renovations right then and there. You just have to be, um, you have to know what the redemption periods are because some uh, homeowners have the right to redeem. In New Jersey is a one year redemption period. You have to check state by state where you are, what are the redemption periods, right? Um, some states are strictly tax lien, some are tax deed, a few states are hybrid, it depends on which county. So you want to watch that and do some due diligence on that or find out from an attorney who foreclosed on tax liens or tax deeds where, where those uh, counties lie at in that state, all right? Um, so, okay, so that's it. Next slide. So here's the process. This is what I want to get into. And if you guys want the slides, please feel free to reach out to me. My goal here is to add value to you. I know I'm going through this pretty fast. I know some of you guys would love to have these slides. Um, so just reach out to me. I'll give you my information in the end. And I'll be more than happy to send, send this to you. Um, and I'm not going to spam you with your email and everything else. I'll just send you a regular email. It's not a trap to get your email. I just want to add value. Um, <laughs> all right. So here it is. Here's the process. So everything with me is process mapped. That's how I have to operate because I use uh, systems where I can automate certain things and create tasks to remove the human error. So when I was able to communicate with the attorney, I was able to extract this information out from him. So when the tax is a delinquent, it will go through a tax lien, tax deed sale. If it's a tax lien certificate purchase and the lien is not redeemed, uh, basically, uh, if the lien is redeemed, you get your money back and you earn interest on it. If the lien is not redeemed, I'm at the top portion, you have to go through the tax foreclosure process. Once you go through that process, you get the property free and clear, um, and then you can sell it. You can rent the property out. You can do a lease option. You can do a regular real estate plan, right? Um, if basically, let's say, uh, if it's a tax lien certificate is not purchased, as, I, as you recall, when I was extracting information from the city, they told me the process that it goes through. It comes back to the city. They purchase it. 
they go through a, a foreclosure process, they go and get the deed, right? And then they put it out in the auction. Some of you guys may know your local municipality or township, let me see if I can hide this bar, or township actually sell auction off properties. So this is how they're able to auction off properties. They'll do intimate domain or the taxes that go through sale that no one buy those little municipal liens like water, sewer liens that people don't pay. Those are liens also. I'm not going to put on a rabbit hole in that. But you can buy those and you can literally in New Jersey foreclose on a property from a water sewer lien. That lien comes before a first mortgage too, believe it or not. Um, so you, you can actually, uh, when the township buy it and foreclose, when the township takes it back from not um, selling at the auction, they will foreclose in, on it, turn it into a deed, and then they will put it out as an auction from the township. They do that with vacant properties. Um, and they also do that with the tax lien they take back, right? And the same thing, you can go through the same process, rent it out and everything else, right? Oops, where did I go myself? Did I go too far back? Overall process and click redemption process. So let's say that you actually go through, this is the redemption process for the homeowner. If you win the bid, right, in short, basically, um, the homeowner have one year to redeem after you foreclose on a property. Uh, there's two types of foreclosures. One is in rem, and this is in New Jersey, and the other is in persona. So here's the difference. An in rem foreclosure is very quick. Um, it's, it's not like a process serve. Is this, is this notified or maybe through certified mail? I've seen um, some attorneys try to do serving, process serve, but um, sometimes that the homeowner don't get it. They can say, I didn't get the mail. And I see people get final judgment, which is your deed in the state of New Jersey. But that can be challenged because a homeowner could come to court and say they never notified me. So the in persona process is the way that I like to go because it's a very low 2% chance, 3% chance, maybe five that they can redeem because that's like a foreclosure process. It takes a little longer. It could take 10 months to a year to go through that process. Um, if you do in persona, they were served. Um, basically, they went through the whole process as if they were... Um, going through foreclosure, they're sued, they get a judgment, everything else. Um, and then if you're successful with that, you take over the property, they have a, their rights to redeem. A lender can redeem, anybody who had equitable interest, which is the owner, a lender, second lien holder, anyone who had equitable interest. Now, if they are successful in redeeming, let's just say you put money into rehab, you, you're entitled to get all that money back. You just have to proof up, show all your receipts and everything else. And you get that money back. So that's one of the risks that you have to be mindful of that you can be redeemed. It's rare that it happens, but it, it does happen. Um, that's why I say go through the strict foreclosure process, the M personam, and then you should be okay. Some people try to take the shortcut and do the M rim so they can do the foreclosure fast, but um, I've seen those get challenged a lot. All right. So this is the process, the redemption process. Here's the foreclosure process. This is what you really want to pay attention to. Because this was what I was able to extract from the attorney. I said, once I invest my money, how long is it going to take for me to get this property? And what is the step? So he was able to give me the, the steps. You know, we go to the auction. We, we buy the uh, tax lien, right? They will do a title search because just like a foreclosure, they have to notify anybody who has an interest in the property. Um, and then they do a 30-day auction, uh, a pre-auction letter, notifying everybody the tax lien was purchased at auction. Um, and then they do a 30-day uh, letter. They file a complaint. 30 days after that, they file a complaint. Uh, the complaint will be filed with the docket number, which actually puts a list pendants on the, um, then they do a list pendants on it to give public notice and cloud the title. Uh, once that's done, they do service process to try to, try to, to serve the people. Um, anyone with interest in the properties gets served. Then after that, 35 days, um, if no one had answered, then they do a, a order requesting, um, order setting date and time for the, um, for the OST, so they can get the, um, they file the OST, which is the order set in time, and after that, they get the final judgment. So here is where, here's where the, the challenge becomes. So when the list pendants is filed, all of the wholesalers or the We Buy Houses guy who's on that list pendants alert, they start getting alerts, they start skip trades, and they start trying to find a homeowner, relocate them, we can buy your house, we can do this. And you might have roadblocks there and you may get redeemed in that part, um, and maybe a 40% chance you'll get redeemed. Uh, we call those title raiders. Um, basically, the only person who can redeem it is the homeowner or the lender. But if they have a situation with the homeowner where they say, you're going to lose anyway, we're going to give you $5,000. Here's the money to redeem it. Deed the property over to us. 
you know, there's a lot of guys out there who play that game. Um, it's not ethical to do that, but, you know, they do it anyway. So you have to be mindful of that. Um, you might have some fallout in that. Once nobody answered, they've been served. The next challenge is the OST, the order setting time, because anything can happen from the order setting time to final judgment. And that's when I'm like on pins and needles, like hurry up and get the date because you could be redeemed at any time before then. But once you get the final judgment in the state of New Jersey, that is your deed. You have ownership of the property. Um, so that that OST to, to final judgment is really, you're like praying and hoping no one comes up and redeem you. Every time the tax office send me a request for a payoff, I'm like, who's asking for the payoff? Is it a title company? Is it a lender? Is it a homeowner? Um, you know, because they're the only ones that could technically do that. So this is the process. Uh, when you invest your money, this is the timeline that you have to go through and the steps that you have to go through to get the final judgment. And this is in a state of New Jersey or a tax lien state. That's the process. Um, you know, why are you waiting for that? You can have appreciation during that period. So if you're worried about, um, you know, losing money or whatever, or paying investors interest, if you borrow money, um, you know, the property in, in this market will definitely appreciate. So you want to keep mindful, be mindful of that. Um, so having, having deferred repairs can show signs of neglect and distinction to the property could potentially mean it might not be redeemed. Here's what I mean by that. I like to buy properties on vacant and dilapidated properties who is just not repaired. No one is living there. So I don't have to worry about buying a tax lien and kicking the old lady out or family out their house when I foreclose. I don't like doing that. So I want to buy something that's in really bad condition. Maybe you need 60, 70, 80,000 renovation. I know a bank is not going to come and redeem that if they have a lien on it because no bank would want to do that, right? They'll just write it off and charge it off. So for me, if that property is, needs about $60,000 worth of renovation and has about $25,000, $30,000 in back taxes, that's a home run for me all day. I know it's less likely for it to be redeemed, right? A lot of the wholesalers might not, um, that might not be their buy box. They might want to do something they can hotel. So I kind of stick with that. That's my business model. Um, you also have to be aware of environmental, right? So before you go to the taxing auction, you want to go and do an inspect inspection of the property. Um, you may not be able to get in because uh, maybe you boarded up, but you want to check and see if there's any oil fields outside um, so you can see if there's any oil tanks. If you're in a sit, uh, city or a state that have oil tanks, if you're in Alabama or down south, most likely you guys don't have um, environmental issues. There's no oil tanks. There's no basements. So um, you might want to be mindful of that. Wetlands is another thing you want to look out for. You're not buying tax liens or something that have wetlands, like if you're in Florida or different states that you know, have wetlands, you want to um, you want to be look out for that. All right, so let's talk about the risk. We talked about the title raiders, right? So the title raiders, once again, these are guys, once you buy the lien, they can backdoor you, negotiate with the homeowner, get it redeemed, do a deed in lieu of escrow, deed in, or escrow deed or something, negotiate something with the homeowner, pay your taxes off. You'll get your interest, so you'll make money. But if you're after the property, you know, it's not a win-win situation. Um, auction fees. Um, so let me skip over that and I'll come back to that because I got a story to tell on that. When you buy a tax lien, you can't put insurance on the property. So that's very risky, right? Property burned down. You own a lien, you have to foreclose on it to take over what's left. If it's a lot or still the fire burnt out house, you can't put insurance on it. So if you borrow money from lenders, unfortunately, they can't be insured, right? Um, I do know that some insurance companies, when I was looking at this, they had talked about insuring the company and making the loss payee the lender. I, I really didn't know how that worked. So I kind of used my own money and I didn't get lenders until I actually foreclose on a property and had ownership on it. But that's a risk you want to look out for. If you buy a tax lien, you can't insure it because, you know, you're not on, you're not the, um, the owner of record. You don't get access to the property, right? Um, you don't own the property, so it's trespassing if you go inside. So um, sometimes the door is open and there's like a ladder that carries you into the house. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so you have to do your own due diligence the best way you know how is what I'm saying, right? Um, basically before the auction, what I usually do is I get the list from the town and then I actually draw, like you can check on my Facebook from a few years ago when I was actually driving around, showing pictures, hey guys, the tax lien coming up. And I was, you know, going through some of the properties, looking on the outside and I was kind of doing my due diligence. You have to really look at these properties. A lot of people bid blindly, they get a list and they bid, they don't know what they got. 
Um, so you want to make sure you actually go to a physical site and make sure there's not a tree growing up through the property or any contamination or anything. So you definitely want to check that out. It's very risky if you don't uh, check out the property. And it's also risky if you can't get access and get inside because you don't know what's inside. It could look nice on the outside, but it could have been a pipe that busted and you know, it could be wood that rotted out that you can't account for. And the last one, what I said, I got a short story to tell, it takes about three minutes, auction fees. The special tax lien auction that I like, unfortunately, they have an auctioneer come in and auction off the tax lien. That auctioneer is a real estate broker that charges 10% of your bid price. So if I bid $100,000 on a tax lien, they get 10%, or they can know that the, the township gets 100,000 and I have to pay 10,000 to the auctioneer. So if my tax lien gets redeemed, I don't get back that auctioneer fee. I just get the interest on the, on the, the amount of the lien. So if I bid 100,000, lien was 30, and I had a 16% interest rate, plus I paid 10,000, that's $70,000 over the lien price. So I just had to figure out what the interest was and calculate my lien off of that. It could be you know, somewhere around 5% that I'm gonna make on it, which is not good if my money is costing me six, 7%. But anyway, you wanna be mindful of auctioneer fees. This township where I'm at in New Jersey, they do that. A lot of people do it online. Um, but if they do have that, you want to uh, account for that. That was risky for me. Um, I bought uh, 36 liens at one auction. Um, there was not a lot of happy people because I took all of the tax liens that people wanted. And uh, six months later, I started getting redemptions back left and right. And I was like, what is going on? And it was the title raiders. They were picking me off one by one. And I actually lost probably about, I think, $150,000, $160,000 in auctioneer fees. But the good thing about it was um, when I purchased these tax things, because I'm, I'm a note guy, so I go out and buy pools of notes. It was like I bought a pool of, pool of notes, right? So you're not going to make out, um, especially I buy second mortgages, which if you guys know seconds, everybody say risk, risk, risk. But um, for me, it was like some are going to work out. You're going to get home runs. Some are you going to lose on, right? So that loss actually was my gain because the ones that I made money on were very profitable, so then I could take that loss and go against it, right? So that's how I kind of looked at it. And I really didn't take it to heart, but I learned something in that process when I was getting picked off, um, you know, from the title raiders. Thank you. Um, that was a lot of, of good knowledge. Um, we have a question here that when you get redeemed, you get your purchase amount and interest back, question mark. Correct, yes. So let's say if the lien is 30,000, you spend 30000 for the lien and it's a 16% interest rate or whatever it is. Um, you actually, when you get redeemed, you get your principal back plus the interest. They have to pay that in the redemption. So the title company, if they refinance and sell it, selling it, they will reach out to the tax office and go, can you give us the, the redemption amount? And they have to pay that in your earning interest. One other thing also that I didn't mention is um, you can actually pay what they call subs, subs, the subsequent taxes. You should actually. So you buy a tax lien. Um, it's let's say you buy in 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 December. You're buying Q3 and Q4 taxes in December. In Q1 of that following year, you should be paying those taxes because if you don't pay those taxes and they go delinquent, someone else can buy those delinquent taxes and foreclose on you. But they have to pay you your interest, so you don't have to pay it. But the benefit is, if you do pay it, you get to earn interest. On the, on the taxes that you're buying also, it just, keep, it just keeps accumulating. So if you spend that $30,000 for taxes in Q3 and Q4, and then you go buy Q1, now the interest just keeps accumulating because the tax certificate holder purchased Q1 taxes, now it gets all bundled up and you earn that interest on all of that. That's in New Jersey where I'm at. I don't know where is where you are. You wanna to speak to an attorney or speak to your local municipality to find out how that works, but you definitely wanna buy the subs and that, that keeps the subsequent taxes that keeps any future tax lien bidders um, to take those taxes and put a foreclosure action for you. Thank you, Fuquan. Um, actually, the next question has to do with municipality. Um, what municipality has the auctioneer auctioneer fees? Do you know? Oh, that was that was I'm, I was in Irvington, New Jersey. You want to know where I buy my tax liens? Is Essex County. Um, you have East Orange, Irvington, Newark. Uh, you have Union County. Um, you know, every county is different. It's, it's a lot online now. I liked it when it was uh, in person because you could go in and create relationship, ask questions, but everything is online. Um, you can buy taxes all, all across the country online now. So somebody said, okay, go ahead. 
Yeah, no. Can this be used for land purchase? Yeah, I saw that. So if there's lands have taxes as well. So yes, you can buy taxing on land and you, you can foreclose on a tax lien and take over the land. Yes, you can. If that's what your question meant. <laughs> Um, all right, there's so many questions for you, Fuquan. I buy tax liens in Florida in certain counties because I know the software that is used by the county to sell tax liens. How do you learn about all the software in each county might use to sell their tax liens or deeds? Google. <laughs> no, seriously. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to be smart, but you, you have to Google it, tax liens in this township, and they will give you the websites um, that you can go to. There's, um, there's websites that does certain state, there's websites that does it um, universally. I actually focus on the local municipality where I'm at because it's right in my backyard. Um, that's where I have all my resources and relationships at. So that's kind of where I'm at with doing that. I haven't ventured out of state yet. Um, I might one day, but um, I'm just doing it in New Jersey where I know I can actually monitor the property and do what I have to do. All right, yeah, so that was the next question. Do you invest outside of New Jersey? You answered that. I am in DC and it's competitive here. How do you compete with corporate bidders? That's really tough. Um, uh, I know, and I know what that question is coming from, Jessica. It's the, the big funds are, they play the preservation of capital game, right? We play, we want to return. They play, let's just preserve the money. So what I mean by that is they're raising money at 2%, 1%. If they bid down at 3% or 4%, they just preserving the 10, 20, $30 million they have in a fund, you know, to make 3% interest on a lien. And now they have a possible chance to get the house. Um, that's pretty much the game they play. So it's really hard to compete with them. That's why I played a different space, Jessica. What you might want to do is find out from your local municipality in New Jersey and DC, what happens to those vacant properties, right? There's a vacant property registration list. You can start there first. Every vacant property it's supposed to be registered with the municipality. You can get a copy of that vacant property list, and then you can go to the tax office and say, can you tell me if any of these properties have tax liens on them, right? Now, those are properties that most of the funds that are bidding down these, these, loan, these uh, tax liens to a small yield where you can't compete, they're not going to want to play in that space. They want to play in a space where it's occupied, where someone is more than likely going to redeem the taxes so they can continue to earn interest. Um, and they may be set up with the township because they have more, so much capital to deploy. And so, as soon as they go delinquent one month, they buy, the, they buy the taxes right away. I know Nork is like that. You'll miss taxes for one quarter and then you got to go get a payoff from a third party. You're like, damn, it's just been one quarter. Um, so uh, what I was trying to say is find out for the vacant properties. What do they do with that? Is there a special auction on those properties separately? And then maybe you might have some luck in that in doing that. Thank you. Um, I have a question here. Does the first tax lien holder have priority to foreclose than the later tax lien holders? So the first tax lien, that's a great question. And I learned that also because I bought a tax lien in second position what well, was after the first tax lien. <clears throat> and this gentleman purchased it in first. It was on a, um, a, a mixed use property. And I had plans there. I was going to renovate it and rent it out to somebody who wanted to put like a chicken rotisserie spot. We was talking. I visualized it. And I was going through the foreclosure. And the person who had the first lien, they had the right to redeem you, right? So, because um, they own the first lien. So, uh, basically, at any you can go down a foreclosure path, path. And when you go to get your final judgment, they can redeem you. So, what the guy said to me, he said, look, let me take your position since you're so further down a foreclosure. And I'll give you an extra $10,000. Now, I had waited like 11 months to get to this point. We served everybody. He didn't say anything. He just came out the blue. Like right before I got the, uh, the OST, the order setting time date going for final judgment, two weeks before that, he came out, contacted my attorney. It was like, we had the first tax lien position. Uh, we want to take, we, wanted to, we, want, we want you to sign your lien over to us so we can move forward and foreclose on a homeowner. And they did nothing the whole time they owned this lien for two years. It took me 11 months to get to my process. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to take the money. I'm going to make them start all over from the beginning. Right? I could have took the $10,000 they was going to pay me, but I was just so frustrated that we notified them and they didn't do anything. I said, I don't want your money. Just pay me my money, my interest. And then you start all over from the beginning. And I drove past the property a week ago. This was like almost a year ago. They still haven't done anything with it. Right? They just only, they're not paying the subsequent taxes. They just own first priority lien. 
So um, yeah, they have the right over all the other subsequent liens that are purchased to redeem it at any time. But if they don't answer, you can you know foreclose and pay them their interest. They'll get paid their interest. Eventually, he could have just said, pay me my interest, but he wanted the property, obviously. So, but I just said, nope, you, you start all over from the beginning like me. <laughs> uh, sounds complicated uh, and time consuming to buy individual liens. Are there ways to invest in a fund that does the work investors share in the profits? Yeah, this is actually active. Um, this is definitely an active strategy. There is a passive strategy, but it is actively managing investments. The, spoke, the first tax lien that I talked about was the ones that are occupied. More than likely, that's going to be redeemed. Um, but that's where uh, Jessica was saying it's very competitive, where the big funds are coming in and they're bidding it down. So you're really not going to make a strong yield there. You will make a higher yield in a fund that does that. Um, um, and really, I'm not pitching my fund, but we actually have that model within our fund where we buy tax lien notes and hard real estate assets. And um, it's just a long game. So you definitely want to ride the coattail of someone experience and kind of get a pref that you can count on and not a, if this happened, then I'll make this yield. So there are plenty of funds that actually uh, invest in tax liens. Um, you can find out there. That's something that, that's just their play. And that's how I actually started to really laser focus on it because I was buying real property from funds that were uh, foreclosing on tax liens and they were not in the state and they was going, we don't know what to do with this property. Um, you know, and I started to reach out to them and say, I will buy it from you right before you're about to get your final judgment. Just send me the address. I'll do my due diligence, make you an offer, and I'll buy it off your hands as soon as you get the final judgment. So yes is the answer to your question. There are plenty of funds out there that you can ride along the coattails that have this strategy. And your fund is listed on veravest.com, right? For yes, anyone to so check, check us out. out. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, do you recommend any books or authors for research? Yeah, so there's so many. Again, it's state by state. Um, what I would highly recommend is if you are very serious about doing this, first, I'm going to see the PowerPoint so you look at it. Find out from your local municipality where you're going to do it at. The same route I did. Who is their attorney that they use? They'll give you that name. You kind of call that attorney, you know, the best uh, education is really to put the attorney on retainer and you now. They owe you hours where you can kind of drill down and ask your questions. What are the risks? What is the process in this state? How can I lose my money? Uh, what do I need to look out for? And they'll let you know. You can go to Amazon, put in tax lien investing. There's plenty of books um, that you can read on that. There's so many webinars, YouTube. It's just a, a, so much information out there that if you really were serious, you can you know, drill down and get as much information as you can. Yes, that's a good one. Michael uh, Pellegrino is a very good one from New Jersey, Andrew. Thank you for that. Um, that's that's really good. He's actually uh, Keith Bonchi was my attorney. Uh, he's one of, and I think Mike was also one of the attorneys that do the uh, certifications for tax lien uh, tax lien attorneys. So, um, and Michael Pell uh, Pellegrino has a great book. Uh, I forgot the name of it. I guess it's called Tax Lien Tax Lien Investing in New Jersey. It's specifically for the state of New Jersey. So you definitely want to Google or YouTube for your state and find out if there's any books or anything for the laws of your state. Uh, did you wait? How did you? No, I don't use them for my foreclosures. I don't. Okay. <laughs> I, I use Keith Bonchi, Andrew. Um, how did you assemble your team for rehabs? Oh, wow. I've been doing this for 21 years. Um, I started off in 99, and really it was local people from the area where I grew up from, North New Jersey. Um, started with demolition crew. And, um, you know, got ripped off a few times from contractors that I, I really wasn't educated when I first got started. Um, and then I really just really started going to Home Depot, sitting in the parking lot, writing down phone numbers on vans, calling people, driving to their sites, doing inspections and everything else. And really, it took me probably about five years to really understand construction. Construction is a beast within itself. But um, I've uh, established relationships with a lot of contractors over the years. And I have some of the guys that I've been using for 10 years that still 10 years or more that still work with me. Um, and really construction really is about, not about trying to get the cheapest job, trying to find somebody that has the, the best quality work and really is gonna really be on your team. And what I try to do is create an alignment with them and help them out also. They see what I'm doing on flipping houses, I'm making money. Maybe that's something they wanna do. So how can I add value and show them how to do it? Maybe I'll partner with them. And they'll do the construction. I'll fund, I'll fund the whole project and we'll split the profit or we'll split a percentage of it. Um, aligning yourself like that where they have a vested interest is good as well. 
and they will be highly motivated to do that. And they'll be on your team. They won't steal your material. They won't, you know, you know, put sodas and potato chips on your Home Depot account while they wait in the line. You know, all the nonsense you go through with contractors. Um, really finding a good GC also and, and not learning how to leverage that person. Getting VAs that you can leverage good systems and processes is very important also. I'm sure you can stay on track of it. But contractors is, is a beast for everyone. It's really, it's never perfect. You just have to find the equanimity, the kind of the balance um, to keep it going. I keep my guys busy. You know, we're doing 22 rehabs right now. You're busy, busy. Yeah. Um, all right. Have we exhausted all the questions? There's there were tons. <laughs> um Fuquan, how can uh people get a hold of you? Oh, sure. It's uh F Bilal at nngcapitalfund.com. You I'm on Facebook, Fuquan Bilal. You can go to YouTube, Fuquan Bilal, Instagram, Fuquan Bilal. Um, those are my handles on all three of those platforms. You can hit me through instant messenger or you can email me. Um, I'll put my email address here in the chat, F-B-R-L-E-O at ngcapitalfund.com. Yep, it's in the chat. You can hit me there. If you're interested in getting a slide, please email me or catch me on one of the social media platforms and I'll definitely um, send a slide to you. I wanna thank you guys for taking the time out to listen. I know I ran through that, it was a lot of information. But I just wanted to come on and share value about this investment strategy because a lot of people know about it, but they're not using it. And I started to take action and use it because it was a way for me to get off market property. So basically what this comes down to is a way to get properties not off, not off the MLS or direct the seller. Um, hey, you can even get the tax lien list and skip trace and do mail marketing to these people who have a pain point and possibly make a deal with them to buy their property from them. You don't have to go to the auction. You could just get the list and market to the people who has that pain point. It's the way you have probate and everything else. I feel like we're getting the inside scoop from Juan. <laughs> this is great. Yes. Um, and the, lots the of main, go ahead. The, the main thing that I wanted to say was the vacant property list. I don't know if you guys missed that, but people get so lazy and they don't go after the vacant property list. It's so easy to walk into the township and go, which department has the vacant property list? Who do they register with? You go there, you get that list, and you walk it over to the tax auction. You tell me which one of these properties have liens on them, and then what do you guys do with them? And then you're off to the races from there. And Fuquan, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And on a holiday week as well, we um, really appreciate your time and everyone who joined us as well. I hope you guys have a good holiday, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, take care.